Uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Steve Souders. I work here at Google on web performance. And uh, this is the fifth uh, Tech Talk speaker that I've brought in. And for various reasons, um, I've decided to give a name to this speaker series. Um, and so I'm calling it Web Exponents, where exponents is in the sense of uh, people advocating a cause, where here the cause is raising awareness of uh, web technology and innovation. And I even have a marketing tagline for this. I don't think I sent that out in the email. Um, the tag, it's, so it's web exponents, and the tagline is raising web technology to a higher power. Yeah, that, yeah it's not too cheesy. OK, it's pretty cheesy. And uh, so we're going to, uh, I'm going to do a blog post um, uh, next week that will you know, talk about this speaker series and some of the future speakers coming out. And it will also have a link. There's a YouTube playlist that Mark Chow, who works here at Google, um, and who does most of the video uh, work that's required to get these talks available. Uh, he created a playlist on YouTube. And so all the talks, uh, videos of the talks will be there. And just as a reminder, some of the past speakers we've had um, are John Resig, Doug Crockford. Last week, PPK was here talking about uh, mobile web. Uh, I had a talk in there. We've got Rob Campbell today, um, and I'm lining up some other speakers going forward. Uh, feel free to send me an email with other suggestions of speakers you'd like to see here. Um, so today, uh, we have Rob Campbell. Um, so a couple years ago, myself and a few other folks started the Firebug Working Group after Joe Hewitt had um, uh, started working on other projects to try to keep Firebug development uh, alive and prosperous. And about eight months ago, uh, Mozilla um, contributed some people to work on that project. And one of those folks is Rob Campbell. And he's kind of, in my mind, become the ringleader of the effort. So we have weekly con calls, and he's always driving the con call and driving the schedule and uh, tracking the critical bugs and going back and working with the uh, folks at Mozilla for uh, other connections that we need. And I feel like uh, something he's really contributed to that effort that was needed um, out of the, you know, like 1.1 Firebug releases was a lot of stability and testing. And um, so I think you would all agree with me that, you know, now we're on 1.3 um, and it's very stable. I mean, of course, there's always going to be uh, issues, but you know, to me, it's it's night and day the difference in stability there. So I'm really thankful that uh, Rob is riding herd on that effort, and uh, so I invited Rob to come. There's you know, one four is out now. Uh, we actually had a meeting yesterday with the Firebug Working Group, talking about one five and one six and future directions. And so I invited Rob to come today and kind of give us a walk through of Firebug, some new features. And then I think he's going to talk a little bit about some of that perspective on stability that uh, he's brought to Firebug and some lessons learned there. So without any further ado, please help me in welcoming Rob Campbell from Mozilla. Thanks. Um, do I have to actually talk into this mic? Can you people online hear this? Is that OK? You have to talk into the mic? OK. Okay, so thanks for that introduction, Steve. Um, it's good to be here and uh, meet all you fine Googlers. Um, so the topic is debugging the web. Um, it's really going to be uh, mostly about uh, Firebug 1.4. I'm going to demo some of the new features and uh, the layout and uh, show maybe a couple examples of some little tricks that I picked up along the way. and. Uh, if there's time permitting and interest, as Steve mentioned, I'll uh, talk a little bit about open source projects like Firebug and how I've contributed and hopefully helped and um, see how that goes. So uh, first thing, um, and this is sort of project related, uh, we're going to do something called a test day next week, which um, our Mozilla QA people have decided to set up to help us. Uh, it'll take place mostly in IRC. Um, that's our, uh, our our IRC server there. So if, if anybody's interested in that, I'll be blogging about it um, probably this weekend, uh, early next week, 
to try to get the word out a little bit. And we'd appreciate any, anybody that uh, can actually show up and, and help run through some tests. So I'll just skip over this a little bit. Um, as uh, Steve mentioned, uh, Joe Hewitt is the originator of Firebug. And uh, for whatever reason, he decided to move on to other things. Um, a little later, John Barton started picking up the code. Um, Steve. Uh, joined the Firebug working group, and then uh, versions 1.2 and 1.3 had uh, the introduction of a, a bunch of other contributors to it. Um, I came around at the beginning of about 1.3, so that was last year in July. So what is a debugger? We typically, when we think of debuggers, we think about um, debuggers for our computers, our desktops, and they're generally pretty ugly. They're often terminal-based, um, sometimes they're strapped into an IDE and they look a little better. The web looks a little different. So I imagine most of you are familiar with Firebug, so I didn't actually include a picture of it. This here is um, a picture of our new context menu on the status bar. So when you right-click on that now, you're going to see a menu like this pop up. And there's a couple of additions to it that weren't there before. Um, these are all tied in with our new activation model, which we're hoping is going to be a lot simpler than the previous version. Um, before, I don't know how many people are familiar with Firebug. <laughs> if you turn it on before, you typically have to enable or disable a bunch of other panels, the console, the script panel, the net panel. These things were disabled um, by default. And there were good reasons, I think, for that initially, but um, Steve and uh, some other users have found that to be um, unnecessarily difficult. So we reworked that for version 1.4. Um, now when you turn it on, everything should just be enabled. Um, the first, I think, um, tip that I, I wanted to point out, and a lot of people don't realize this, that little bug up in the top left corner of the panel is actually a menu. If you click on it, these magical things appear. Um, and I sort of highlighted this open with editor option because it's a pretty useful one for, for dealing with uh, changes to your web page and, um, and, and saving those for, for later. This is another type of menu, uh, the console menu, HTML menu, uh, panel. These things all have them. Uh, and we, we used to have an options menu that was down in the toolbar area, which is down here. Um, I'm going to actually stop here for a second and, and just mention we, we flipped the tab menu around, or the tabs around, um, and the toolbar. Uh, the toolbar used to be on the top. Curtis rightfully pointed out Curtis Bartley is actually sitting off camera. You probably can't see him. But uh, he was instrumental in pointing out the wrongness of this orientation and then um, proceeded to implement it not once but four times uh, to get it right. And uh, we're pretty happy with the results. Um, but these menus uh, appear off these little triangles uh, on each of the tabs, and they contain a bunch of different options related to each one of those tabs. So you can see here I've got a bunch of stuff. And this error message in the background is actually because I've got Chrome errors turned on. One of the other extensions that I'm running with uh, had some poorly initialized button. So it, it showed up in there. The other new feature that I think is going to be a huge hit is something John Barton did for this release. And You'll see two instances of this. When you go to the script panel, you'll see one of them down here on the toolbar with the other debugging buttons. And we've also added one up to the top. Uh, it looks like a pause button, and that's essentially what it does. It uh, enables break on next debugging, which means um, you turn it on when an, the next JavaScript call comes through. Um, the debugger stops, and it will bring you to uh, the line of code that is trying to execute. And then you can step in, step over, do the usual debugging tricks. This is going to be great for tracking listeners on web pages that you can't find otherwise. Um, the other area that's seen a lot of improvement is the network panel. And this is 
directly related to uh, Steve's inputs and helpful suggestions and uh, implemented by our rock star, Jan Odvarko. He can't be here. He's doing rock and roll things elsewhere. Um, he did a lot of work cleaning up the, um, the images, the, the colors, the gradients, and he's worked really hard at improving the timing on the network panel. It should be much more accurate in version 1.4 than it was in version 1.3 and 1.2 and all versions before that. Um, not sure how visible it is. We've got these two horizontal, uh, sorry, vertical lines running through this timeline here. These both represent um, uh, loaded events that are propagating up. The first one is DOM content loaded that I'm hovering over here. That's uh, a message that the browser sends up when it has enough um, content to start to start building the DOM. And then the next one is your usual loaded event, which I am. You're, you're probably used to seeing. Um, over the next little while, we're going to try to augment this panel to include more of these types of events so that you can see what's happening on the web page. Uh, reflows have been something that have been asked for, and there's a new event in, in Firefox now that actually um, notifies the user when um, reflows are, are occurring, sorry, paints are occurring. Um, we're hoping we can do the same for, for reflows. And the HTML and CSS panels haven't really changed because they're perfect. So um, I'm going to do a bit of a demo. And um, before I do that, I just wanted to make a quick note about using profiles. Uh, how many of you here or out in the world use a separate profile for testing their web pages in Firefox? OK. Um, how many people were aware that you could use separate profiles for Firefox? Good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to say you're, you're going to need to do this all the time. I myself use Firebug with a bunch of other extensions installed often, just in daily use, and I don't have any problems. Once in a while, you'll run into some funny little interactions with other extensions that you might have installed. Um, it's just the nature of the beast. Uh, I, so for, for heavy duty debugging, you might, and, and if you start to see things get a little weird, I would recommend uh, visiting this page and setting up a debugging profile specifically for doing this sort of work. So OK, I'll uh, clip out of here. A little setup. So. Oh, you mean the screen hasn't been broadcast this whole time? Well, it was probably a lot less interesting if, if it did. Oh. You can move the pad. You think that's. So, oh, look, we've already got an error. I don't know which wireless network I'm on. I'm on Google Guest, so let's see. There we go. So as this is loading, There we go. So as this stuff is coming through, you can see all of these individual gets showing up in the network panel. There's our load event. Hmm. Didn't get DOM content loaded. That's different. Oh, a couple 405s. <coughs> so.
So the interesting stuff here, well, there's all kinds of interesting stuff, but you can see these green lines here uh, connecting. Sometimes those will be waiting, uh, waiting for response, depending upon the quality of your network connection. I, I, I enjoy looking at these things over slow connections because it's uh, kind of interesting to see where all this stuff is coming from. Um, okay, but I wanted to show the break on next feature. So I'm going to click on this. Hopefully that'll work. Let's see here. Markets. Oh, here's a Google ad. And there we go. So I just moused over. My teeth aren't yellow. And uh, it popped up into this. Um, I presume this is Google Analytics. And it shows you where it's coming from on the screen. Can people see that? Do I need to step off this thing to uh, zoom out? I hope so, because this is really cool. So this thing, we can do whatever. I just stepped over it, and uh, we, I think, returned a null. I got a beach ball. Mm. Okay, so that's excellent. So the other thing that I wanted to mention was uh, this open with text editor thing. I've configured mine to use TextMate because I like it. Um, this looks like bookmarklet style JavaScript. A bunch of stuff. I'll try. Um, a different site. Oh, very good. And I get to log in. Mm. There we go. So one of the cool things with this is we've got this. It's not as cool if it doesn't get all of the files. So I'm still using an alpha version of this. Um, we should be shipping beta 1 next week, and that will hopefully have a couple of these final things. Here we go. So if you've got some minified JS um, like this, it's generally pretty difficult to see what it is. And opening it up in an external editor can sometimes help that if you're trying to see what's happening. You still don't get any variable names, but for actually inspecting what's going on, you can get maybe a better sense of, of what's happening there. Um, another thing is this profile button, if you want to see what's happening when you're typing. Press update. And now you can see all of these functions that have been called um, while I was running that bit of JavaScript, and you can hopefully click in these things. So we know that it's an init function. If you're lucky, you might be able to find the area in your JavaScript code that corresponds with that particular init. Could be this one. I'm not saying it's perfect, but it can help you, I think, find your way around some, some scary JavaScript. Um, one of the other things that uh, I find is kind of useful for just running, um, for, for doing a little bit of web experimentation is oftentimes you'll see stuff that you don't really want on a web page. It's more, probably more useful on CNN when you've got all these banners and stuff flying around. An alternative to ad block is to just remove stuff, or you can do that. 
delete a node, delete an element. So that's that. Um, and as for the activation model, um, I can press this button now and it will drop um, Firebug back down into the status menu. And you'll see that I've got uh, a minimized um, page here in this, this hover help. And it'll tell you what's running. Um, you bring it, buck, bring it back up the same way you usually would. Now the close button will actually disable Firebug. If it's gone off the screen, it's not doing anything. You won't get error messages on the console. So that's just something to note. And hopefully the, the open and separate window will still work if you want to you know, monitor network traffic on a web page for an ongoing period. So that's pretty much my short demo of new features. Um, does anybody have any, any questions about any of that? Or? Yes? The flashlight. Um, that's our new inspect button. When we, when Curtis rearranged the tab strip in the toolbar, um, can everybody see that this is a flashlight? This is a temporary graphic. Um, we were, we're hoping to replace it with something else, but that's the inspect button. So it's the familiar um, way to navigate through um, the HTML. I would also, I would also recommend, um, just as another point, visiting the documentation on getfirebug.com. We'll be updating that for 1.4, and um, it has some excellent keyboard and mouse shortcuts over here, which are really handy. F12 to open, uh, Command Shift C to use Inspect. That is probably a quicker way than using the Inspect button, and it's something that I forget all the time, but it's really handy. So definitely, when you're playing with the new version of, of Firebug, look around in this menu and see, see some of these, these sites, these uh, links. Anything else? Okay. So I wanted to next talk a little bit about extensions that are available for Firebug. Um, you can see extensions, the current list of extensions on the getfirebug.com website under extensions. Uh, it hasn't really been updated in a while. There's, um, there are some new additions and um, we'll be adding to those in the next little while. Uh, one contributor, KP Decker, um, he's built something called FireDiff, which we think is going to be really valuable. Uh, if you've ever been editing CSS or changed values uh, in a DOM object and you were wondering what they were before, this captures all of that. And it happens either within Firebug or within your application on the web itself. So it will keep track of changes that happen um, and then report them back in a panel. It's still a little crude, um, but he's active, actively developing it. And we can think of a few features that would be really handy to implement, being able to like take snapshots of CSS or DOM, replaying um, the state of a web page, all kinds of cool stuff. So we'll be, we'll be highlighting that on this page um, in a little while. Another one is Fire Cookie. It lets you track um, cookies that are uh, being asked for um, by, by websites, so you can see what, what we're feeding back to them, what data is being stored. Uh, Fire PHP is another big one. Um, it's excellent, an excellent extension for uh, doing PHP development. And then there's a couple others like Live Coder and Why Slow, which recently had an update. Um, so all of you here are probably JavaScript developers. I think that's a safe bet. Um, if there's ever something that Firebug does not do that you would like to do, I would highly recommend checking out um, extension development for Firebug. You might be surprised that it's fairly easy to cook something up that can do exactly what you're looking for. Um, and the Firebug working group discussion group on uh, Google Groups uh, contains links to documentation on how to do that. 
um, Software is Hard, I believe is the name of Jan Varko's uh, blog, and he's written up some comprehensive tutorials on how to um, start writing extensions. And it's good stuff. So uh, that's pretty much all I had. Uh, it's a little short, but um, I can talk a little bit, I think, about uh, some open source stuff related to the Firebug project. I think it's safe to say that um, we, the reason we're doing this is because we want to make web development um, better, period. And I think Firebug goes a long way to doing that. Um, so uh, I guess, um, yeah. Do I have any insights? I don't know. I think consistency is important. Um, having um, people that can reliably uh, be there to sort of steward the project through um, uh, through its various phases. Planning, obviously, is, is help helpful. Um, yeah. Open source is funny in that it often demands uh, people do things. There's always going to be unpleasant tasks in um, an open source or any development project, for that matter. You know, infrastructure that needs to get built. Uh, you need to run unit tests. You need to test things. Um, and I think having a willingness to do all of those little things as they come up and do, doing them hopefully in a timely fashion is, uh, is good. Does anybody have any questions about Steve? Sure. I can do that. Uh, so we realized that we had a need for um, to, to test Firebug, uh, the software, and and doing that in a way that didn't necessarily involve human interaction. Um, so one of the things that I had done at Mozilla initially was set up the uh, unit testing infrastructure for Firefox. And um, that has turned out to be immensely useful for the Firefox project. We wanted to do the same thing for Firebug. Um, so John Resig went off and uh, came back with something called FireUnit, which is an extension to Firebug, which allows you to write small test cases that interact with uh, Firebug itself and then can report the results back. We've since gone through, I think, two uh, sets of changes, two, two morphs of fire unit. We're now using something called FB test within um, the fire bug project because fire unit was a little deficient in some ways for, for some of the things that we needed. Still useful for other things. Um, and I think John is actually taking uh, fire, um, fire unit to a place that will allow web developers to test their own websites. And you may start to see some integration with Test Swarm over the next little while, which is another one of his projects. Um, so the end, the end goal for us and FB test or Fire Unit is going to be to have it automated and reporting to our various bits of infrastructure at Mozilla so developers can see when they break things immediately. So. Future roadmap for Firebug? Yeah. Um, so we're looking at the next two versions, I think. Version 1.5 is going to focus heavily on extensions. Um, we want to, um, to sort of clean up what's in there already, make extension development better for people, um, clean up some of the events. I mean, because it's an asynchronous system, uh, it's all event driven. And uh, that hasn't really been. I guess, cohesively looked at since the beginning. Um, so we want to clean that up and make it better for ex extension developers in 1.5, which will be our big focus. 1.6, we want to uh, change the underlying JavaScript debugging mechanism in Firefox um, to support some new features. What those new features might look like is uh, hard to say right now, possibly remote debugging. Um, it, 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 it will be the first major overhaul of that particular service since uh, the Firebug or, or Mozilla Suite 
developed a JavaScript debugging environment. So we're, we're anxious to see what that's going to look like. Yes? Um, JavaScript debugging has changed a fair bit over the past couple of years. I mean, it's rapidly evolving. We're starting to see more and more um, minified JavaScript. The length of JavaScript files changed a lot over just the past three or four years. Uh, we've had to modify Firebug, or John Barton has had to modify Firebug to be able to support tens of thousands of lines of, of code in the script editor, which is something that just killed it before. Uh, we're also seeing lots more evals, uh, eval JavaScript. And Steve has a proponent of using XHR to eval large chunks of JavaScript without blocking stuff. I uh, can tell you it's, um, it's important to be able to deal with that stuff. And eval code looks a little funny when it comes into the browser. You'll see these. In the script dropdown, you'll see these uh, eval, and then there'll be like a long string after it show up in the menu. Um, not always clear where these things are coming from. So I think having better insight into uh, where those bits of code are coming from and, and dealing with them in a better way, I think, is going to be important increasingly in the next while. Does that answer? Anybody, anybody have anything else? Yes. It is. Uh, it's sort of a, a precursor to that work. We're just looking to see what's in there right now to find all of the extension points and to document them better. And hopefully from that, we're going to be able to um, clean those up, name them a little more consistently, um, and, and ultimately make it easier for extension developers to, uh, to, do, to do what they want to do. I should also, um, that's actually a, a good lead into um, some of the stuff we'd like to do with, with extensions. We'd like to bundle, um, to start releasing bundles of extensions. Like we could have a performance bundle, which might include things like YSlow or um, Fire Cookie um, and, and various things that could be performance related to help you analyze what's going through. Um, we haven't figured out how we're going to do that just yet. There's a couple of couple of potentials, but uh, um, yeah. Um, anything else? Any other questions? Can you talk about uh, Chromebug? <laughs> Can I talk about Firebug? Chromebug. Chromebug. Oh yeah. Um, so Chromebug is kind of funny. It's it's John Barton's sort of personal um, project to be able to debug Firebug development. And it was started as such. Uh, I don't think he ever really intended it to be um, a product per se, but it's fantastically useful when it's working properly. And he's, he's had a bit of a struggle maintaining compatibility with, um, with Firefox changes over the past release cycle, which has sort of hindered Chromebug development. But I believe he's, he's in the process of cleaning it up and making it work better, so we'll be able to use that. So for anybody that does any actual extension development on Firefox, are there any extension developers here? Yeah? Cool. Um, it's an invaluable tool uh, for, for being able to debug crip, uh, scripts in Chrome user space. Is, um, it's pretty unique, uh, and, and we'd certainly like to improve upon it. So I don't know where that's going to go. I'd like to I'd like to see us put some resources on it and actually try to make it into a, a productizable extension. Um, but yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Be besides Chromebug, I'm sorry. Besides Chromebug, is there uh, any other way to uh, debug extensions that's you know, uh, well, comparably? There's lots of little tricks you can do, um, and yeah. Firebug itself can can be kind of useful. You you saw that um, uh, this console option to show Chrome errors, show Chrome messages. 
So if you if you use um, if you hit errors when loading Chrome um, and your extension is a Chrome uh, a Chrome URL, you'll see those things show up. Uh, you can do other little tricks like similar to printf style debugging, but there's there's really no tool that exists right now to really help, and that's it's a, it's a deficiency for sure. Sorry, you had a question. The topic has been brought up. Uh, sorry, the question was um, uh, pertaining to uh, improving or changing the way Firefox uh, deals with JavaScript debugging. And were we planning on uh, working with other browser vendors to uh, standardize or, or unify that, that sort of model? So, and the answer, I think, is it's been discussed, it's been raised, uh, and we don't really have a plan, or I don't really have a plan within Firebug. Uh, it's possible that some other people within the organization have, have looked at it. Um, but um, if, it's, if it's something that is, it would be useful, I, I think that it's certainly something that we should consider. Yep. Sure. Yeah. Um, so Steve, Steve asked. Um, he first wanted to uh, point out Firebug Lite, which some of you may have heard of. It can run as a bookmarklet. Um, we should really fix this up. <laughs> there it is. So we can run this, and we get something that looks a lot like Firebug uh, right in a browser window. Um, the follow-up question was, what do people use to debug uh, web pages in IE6 and IE7? Uh, and I, I'm asking you people, <laughs> what do people use? Sorry? Visual Studio. Visual Studio, yeah. Sorry? Developer. Developer toolbar. Okay. HTTP watch. HTTP watch, yeah. So um, we have this, this tool here, um, Firebug Lite, which works in IE, uh, various flavors. And it, as you can see, it's got an inspect button. You can click on any area, and it'll highlight it in the HTML. You've got a computed style view over in this side, CSS, what that say? So yeah, it's, it's a lot like Firebug. So if you're looking for an alternative tool, I, I would recommend checking that out. We've actually had um, some renewed interest in development on it. Mike Radcliffe uh, has done a lot of work. Um, we've seen some other community effort. Um, just sort of materialize, uh, and, and, and Azer Kosalu, who has been maintaining this, um, I think for the past year and a half, two years maybe, has uh, done some fantastic work, so. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> uh, debugging Firebug Light in Firebug, that's kinda, kinda cool. So uh, anybody have anything uh, else? Thanks, Steve. Thank you.